I've read like just from Gilmore Girls. I've read my favorite YouTubers book recommendations, but I've never read from a celebrity. That is a really big trend here on booktube is to read celebrities book recommendations. And I've always wanted to do a video like that, but I don't care about celebrities. Uh, so I was like, I, I don't know who I would do a video on until it hit me. And that is why today I will be reading Elliot Page's book recommendations. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm a trans man and this is Pucks and Paperbacks where I talk about queer and trans books. So naturally I had to read Elliot Page's book recommendations from the account Celebrity Book Recs on Instagram. I'll have a link down below. Elliot has been one of my favorites for a while. I don't really watch a lot of his work. Juno is one of my favorites though. There is a lot of interviews where he says that he hated Juno so I don't really want to bring it up that much because he's got other things going on for him now. So I might watch some of his stuff this week but I'm really dedicated to reading the books. Last week I went to the library and I picked up two of the books. For First, I have Amateur, A True Story About What Makes a Man by Thomas Page McBee. I'm most excited for this one. Oh, I'm, this is, I'm gonna love this. Amateur follows the author of Trans Man as he trains to fight in a charity match at Madison Square Garden while struggling to untangle the vexed relationship between masculinity and violence. Your boy is a hockey fan. That exudes toxic masculinity. It is so toxic. <laughs> I'm gonna love this, <laughs> okay? I'm gonna love it. And I also have kind of been in my boxing era because I've been watching Creator Clash. And so that is just my new fascination at the moment. So I am gonna love that. Like, honestly, this is gonna be my weekend read. I'm really excited to read this one. And the next book is Punch Me to the Gods, a memoir by Brian Broom. I actually have an audiobook of this on Libro FM. And this is another masculine memoir. And a lot of these are just about toxic masculinity and what it means to be a man and oh my god this is going to be amazing <laughs> so if you want to join me on this ride feel free to hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so more people can see it it really helps out my channel when you do that let's get reading hello it is may 6th and today is my ninth book two birthday i've been here for a long time <laughs> I'm about to run some reading sprints on my channel for a little bit and I'm gonna read more of Amateur, which I'm loving. I just haven't gotten around to actually read it. As you can see, I have a new pair of glasses and I'm just still trying to figure out what my vision is doing. Currently, it's not as clear as I would like it to be. So I'm just hoping that that changes, but I'm gonna host some sprints because I wanna get some reading in, but I also wanna talk to some of my viewers because I feel like I haven't in a while. I haven't posted in over a month and the anxiety that's giving me is horrible. Mainly because like I want to edit and make videos. I love to do it. That's why I've been here for so long. I physically can't which sucks. So hopefully that's gonna get better and you'll actually be seeing this video. I want to just talk to everybody and I figured that I would host sprints because I always post a video on my booktube birthday and I feel weird not doing that. So sprints are the next best thing. So for the sprints, I'm gonna read more of Amateur. I'm really enjoying it. It is all about Thomas Page McBee and why he decided to get into boxing and I love it because it talks about masculinity as a trans man and it's so interesting and I can relate to a lot of the things that he's talking about which is awesome. I love this. I think I'm really going to enjoy a lot of Elliot's recommendations so I'm glad that I was able to pick this up. Hello, it is June 2nd. Happy Pride. I am still reading 
amateur and it's Friday so today I want to try and finish this up. There's no playoff hockey until tomorrow. The scheduling is so weird so I really don't have a lot to do. This week has been so productive so maybe the scheduling does work in my favor. I have some reading plans this weekend to finish up the reading for this vlog because I would love it to go out next week when Elliot's first memoir comes out, Page Boy. So hopefully you're watching it during that time. I really hope that happens but I'm enjoying Amateur so far. I'm about to start the audiobook of Punch Me Up to the Gods. I have it from Libro FM. I'll have a link down below if you'd like to check it out. And that is it for me right now. I will update once I have some reading in, but I'm super excited to get back into Amateur. Elliot is a super private person and I wanted to do things like him in this video, kind of like how I did my Jess Mariano video, but he's super private and I couldn't find many things. So in this video, I am going to be adding a twist where I tell you some fun facts about him. And one thing is that he eats like a teenage boy, which is why I had coffee and cereal for breakfast. Elliot gets up at six, has coffee, and usually tries to write for two hours. So I decided to compromise <laughs> and add in a little breakfast that maybe he would have. A lot of the things that he likes to eat are out of my budget, so I went with the next best thing, cereal. I'm just glad that he likes coffee, okay? <laughs> It's one o'clock. I finished up my chores for the day. I'm about to go on my mental health walk, but I wanted to pop in really quick. I am 22% into Punch Me Up to the Gods. I'm really enjoying it. And it's really reminding me of All Boys Are in Blue because this is another memoir about being a queer black kid, but it's executed the same. So just like All Boys Are in Blue, Punch Me Up to the Gods also has a style where you're reading stories from the author's life and the author narrates the audiobook, which I love. But if you're looking for another memoir about being a black queer kid. I highly recommend this so far and it's making me want to pick up all the books about masculinity. I wish that I would have done this before. If you're newly coming into your identity or you're a trans man or a trans masculine person, I highly recommend to read these books because oh my god they are just incredible and being a trans man who is a little bit more feminine, like I have some feminine traits but I also have a lot of masculine traits and the way that these two books I've been reading talk about masculinity is amazing and really helps just unpack your own because as a trans man most of the time you are trying to unpack toxic masculinity but it's really hard when you're in a world where you're trying to be seen as a man so for your own safety you have to do certain things and that's what amateur talks about which I love. It is like a love letter to trans men. Oh my god it's amazing but this is so incredible. I'm loving it so much. Elliot is fucking awesome with these recommendations. Like I'm going to look at all of their book recommendations and try and read more because oh my god where have I been? I should have been reading books about masculinity and I'm glad that I'm being introduced to them because they are just awesome and so well written. Like I just feel like this is a perfect time for me to be reading these. So if you're a trans man or a trans masculine person I highly recommend to read some of these because it is so good. I'm loving it so much so I am going to read more of this and I will update you later. I really just want to read more of it. Like I wish I could finish it in one day, but I just don't think that's possible. But we'll see what happens. I'm currently making dinner. I'm making some pulled pork tacos and I wanted to give you the first fun fact that I have for Elliot. And that is that he is a hockey fan and that made me so happy. He is from Canada and so it checks out but he said that he's not like a diehard fan but wants to be. He always has been trying to be but I guess just doesn't have the time <laughs> to sit down and figure out what his team is. I thought that he's from Calgary so I would think that he would be a Flames fan. Like originally I thought he was a Flames fan but when I read more into it, he said he cheered for the Kings when he lived in LA and then when Toronto would come, he would also root for them. And honestly, Toronto, <laughs> they're falling apart now. I don't know if I would advise him to become a fan of them, but 
uh, maybe watch some playoffs because playoff hockey is so fun and I feel like playoff hockey is perfect to bring new fans in and to just create fans. So if you've been wanting to become a hockey fan, the Stanley Cup Finals start tonight. Game two is on Monday. So when this video goes out, game three, I believe is Friday. The scheduling is so bizarre, but it is between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Florida Panthers. It's going to be really interesting. So I really appreciated knowing that Elliot is a hockey fan. Now I'm going to get back to my dinner. Good morning. It's Sunday at 10 a.m. and I am spending the morning finishing up Amateur. I am loving it so much. I think this might be one of my favorite books now. I just love it a lot. I love the way it talks about masculinity and being a trans man and also being stealth in the world. I love the way Thomas talks about masculinity as a trans man and how he's learning what masculinity is but at the same time, he's stealth and there are just so many things that I can relate to in this and it feels awesome. Like, I feel like this is the perfect book for any trans man and I just love it so much. It's so awesome. And I have our second fun fact about Elliot. I'm pulling all of these fun facts from Esquire.com's article with Elliot, so I'll have it linked down below for you. The second fun fact is he has a dog named Mo who is so adorable. <laughs> Elliot calls himself a dog dad and here's what he has to say about Mo. I don't even know where to begin with Mo. I'm so obsessed with him. My heart breaks at the thought of mortality whenever I think of him. And I think anybody could relate to that when you have a companion, either a cat or a dog or any kind of animal that you have. Losing a pet is so horrible. It's the worst grief I've ever been through. I hate it so much, but it is nice to just have memories with these animals. I can't find the exact timeline of when he got this dog but it looks like he's had him for a while and so if you follow him on Instagram he will post pictures of his dog. <laughs> I finished Amateur and I loved it. I'm going to share Elliot's blurb and then I'll give you my full review. They say, this memoir is such an important piece of trans literature to support and one that spoke to me deeply and same. <laughs> if you're a consistent viewer of my channel, I always say how I can't get through trans memoirs because they're just too graphic for me sometimes. One of my favorite trans memoirs is Transmission by Alex Birdie because it's so light. It's awesome. I actually read it for a video where I read books with my name in the title so I'll have it up above and I talk about why I picked my name as a trans man. This was just everything that I've always needed because I always feel like the trans memoirs that I read from trans masculine people or trans men are just way too graphic. They feel like they are written for educational purposes, which is totally fine. If somebody needs that in that moment, I am so happy for them. They can just be too much for me and I can't get through them. But this spoke to me on such a different level. And as a trans man, I could relate to it so much. Let me get all of my thoughts together because I have a lot of feelings about this and they're all good. This just came into my life at such a perfect moment and I love it. It kind of felt like a trans older brother writing a story for you and like a guide a little bit. And I just love the way that he talks about being a trans man and grappling with masculinity and sexism. Oh my God, this was just so great. Obviously I'm only one trans man, so I'm only speaking for myself when I say this but it can be a very isolating experience and I wish I would have had this book when I had first come out because I was such an angry person and had so much rage. I really would have needed this book at that time and I'm just so glad it exists. I'm gonna read everything from Thomas Page McBee. He's my new favorite. Let me tell you what the book's actually about because I feel like I haven't really explained it. This is about Thomas Page McBee who became the first transgender man to fight in a boxing match at Madison Square Garden. It was a charity match. He only had four months and he did this to prove his masculinity and just to really understand where aggression comes from. And I love this book because he debunks all of the myths about testosterone and aggression. And it is just fucking fantastic. Like this was so amazing. Oh my God, I loved it so much. It's awesome because through this experiment, he is able to understand understand things that he just didn't see. There are some trigger warnings because he does talk about sexual abuse that he experienced as a kid. He 
talks about his mother dying and the grief that follows with that. And of course, there's talk about sexism, misogyny, and toxic masculinity. But this was just a perfect book. Oh my god, I loved it so much. I'm so glad I read it. Thank you to Elliot because, oh my god, this was so good. I want to read everything by this author now. He's also written Man Alive, A True Story of Violence forgiveness and becoming a man which talks more about the sexual abuse that he experienced and I'm not ready for that book but I definitely will read it when I want to read some heavier stuff but definitely go and pick this up. I would recommend it to honestly everybody because if you want to learn more about the experience of being a trans man I think this explains it so well but in a story this is just one man's experience and I love it so much. Oh my god this was so great. Do let me know if you've read this because I really really loved it. And now I am still 50% of the way through Punch Me Up to the Gods. I'm really hoping to finish it today. I'm about to go on a walk so I'm gonna listen to the audiobook and I will see you later. Let's get a tattoo! <laughs> I am going to put on a tattoo and tell you the next fact about Elliot which is he has nine tattoos. And I actually think it's super interesting. So most of his tattoos are actually references to people in his life. His childhood friend Mark's initials are tattooed under his right collarbone. When I was looking this up, all I saw was his tattoo of the coffee mug, which is why I'm putting mine like right here. I have these tattoos that I was sent like years ago and I just don't know what to do with them so I'm like trying to use them in any video that I can. I did a video before but the audio was missing so that happened. He says one of his best friend's nicknames, one is one of his best friend's middle names. He has a little coffee cup which I referenced which he has with, oh, I can't remember what their name is. I don't know celebrities, okay? He has one for Kristen Wiig, which is just her last name. He has EP Phone Home, which was for his wife. I don't know if that's his ex-wife now. I can't remember. First ever tattoo he got was for Katherine Kenner. It was my nickname for her, which is C. Keens. That's just right under my top right shoulder. I've known Kenner since I was 19. She's my oldest friend in LA and that whole world. Kenner taught me not to take bullshit, to keep my feet on the ground, and to live my truth and to take care of my heart. I think that's so cool because tattoos should have meaning. I mean, it's up to you, like, whatever you want to do. I mean, I'm putting a book on me, <laughs> which I guess makes, kind of makes sense. Hey, look at that. I look just like him. We're practically twins. He also has the word turtles, which is just a random tattoo because they like turtles. Basically, a lot of them are just references to people in their life, which is so cool. I love art and I think that tattoos are such a great conversation starter, a way to show your love for people or also just to document memories like that coffee cup tattoo was probably a nice memory between them. Let me know if you have a tattoo. I would love to know or what the meaning behind it is or if you just have a random book like I do. <laughs> I think this might be upside down now that I think about it. <laughs> it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Hello, it's Monday and I'm here to wrap up this video because last night I finished Punch Me Up to the Gods and I loved it. I think I have found my two best books of the year from this video alone. Let's talk about this and then I'll wrap up the video. This was so great. It is a recollection of Brian's life as a queer black kid, being in the closet, being bullied, and experiencing a lot of toxic masculinity around him, a lot of misogyny. Brian's mother experienced a lot of domestic and emotional abuse from her husband because of his misogyny and he always equated it to God. I really love the way this was written. Written. It's told in stories from his childhood from age 10 up until when he was in high school and college and I just really enjoyed the way that it was written and organized. It was really interesting and what I love the most is there are different chapters that are not just about him. There's one where it's his mother talking and the audiobook was so awesome for that part. There are some other chapters following a young black boy, Tuan, 
as Brian watches him go through life. And I love the way that this was written as well. Trying to be as vague as possible, I really loved how Tuan was incorporated into the story from the beginning to the end. I really liked the way it was incorporated because it is showing a real life black boy and how his father is treating him. And so it's kind of like a mirror for Brian. And I just thought this was so well written. It was amazing, just like Elliot says in his blurb. I totally agree. This was so, so good. There are many trigger warnings. I have two post-its full of them. So I'm just gonna rapid fire them really quick. There's child abuse. There's the F slur and also some racial slurs. There is a grease fire that happens in the house and it is turned into a house fire. There's homophobia, racism, also internalized racism and homophobia, toxic masculinity, misogyny, there's drug use, specifically cocaine, religious bigotry, and then there are physical abuse, domestic abuse, and some emotional abuse. I hope I got everything. If not, you can check Storygraph or something like that for all of the trigger warnings. And that's the video. Thanks so much for watching. I had so much fun doing this video and I got two really great books out of it. If you are going to be picking up page boy let me know i'm going to be getting the audiobook version i'm really excited for that thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up it really helps my channel when you do so and if you're new here feel free to hit subscribe because i make a lot of content about queer and trans books so i would love to have you here I do have a Patreon if you want to support me further. And I recently posted a video where I read the most popular book from the day I was born. So that will be on my end card. Definitely go and check that out if you haven't. And I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.